That's where we begin our coverage of the G20 meeting in New Delhi. Martin and Tanvir are live on the ground. And Marty, the White House has already confirmed that President Biden will be skipping a meeting with the Chinese Premier over there. Indeed. Good morning, Dan. Good morning, Middle East and early Europe as well. We can confirm that to be true. We can also confirm that uh, there is going to be one key meeting for U.S. President Joe Biden. He arrives here this evening at about 7 o'clock local time, and 45 minutes after that is supposed to meet with the Indian Prime Minister Narendra Modi. So at least that we can confirm. And I think this underscores this is going to be the third time in five months that these two leaders are meeting. And this only underscores, uh, Tanvir, how how much the, uh, the relationship has improved recently. Yeah, in, indeed, Martin. And I think the focus areas for that relationship are two. One is defense and one is energy. India is trying to diversify its energy needs away from Saudi Arabia. So obviously the U.S. plays an important part there, uh, being one of the swing producers in the world. And then uh, as far as uh, its defense alliance is concerned with, with the U.S., you know, India, of course, for the longest while, 80% of India, and you know this, right? 80% of India's military hardware has been imported from Russia, right? It has has a three-decade-long relationship, military relationship uh, with, with Russia in terms of uh, more cooperation with that region. And so it's looking at the U.S. for some diversification as far as building that military alliance and diversifying away from Russia as well is concerned. Indeed, yeah. And uh, Dan, I think it begs the question, so with the relationship improving so quickly and so well, where do we go from here? Here's one expert that we talked to earlier. Take a look. I do not think India and the United States are headed for a traditional alliance relationship. It is a relationship of strengthened and continually strengthening partnership. But I think that question of a mutual defense treaty or mutual defense alliance is off the table. I think India very much doesn't want to see its freedom, what it sees as its freedom of action in the future constrained uh, by requirements to act on behalf uh, of another country due to an alliance agreement. That's just not part of the conversation. I think uh, many policymakers in Washington have grown to understand that. So an expert we talked to earlier today about this whole issue of the improving U.S.-India relationship. So it's not going to lead to any formal alliance or even a mutual defense treaty. The best that we can hope for right now is simply just allies. Allies, indeed. And I think, Martin, the other important angle that we need to bring uh, to the fore is really what is India setting? Uh, in terms of its own agenda at the G20 forum, right? Because this is turning out to be India's moment under the sun, right? So they're talking about debt sustainability. They're talking about the African Union inclusion. So will G20 be G21 next year? That's something that we need to watch out for. And of course, climate risk and how India and China need to work towards their climate goals at a time when the whole transition process has bottlenecks to face, given that both these countries are fossil fuel powered in terms of electricity and they're meeting their overall energy demands. And of course, oil is another story. Story. If you get into that, that'll take a while. But the point remains that India is trying to push all of this aside of multilateralism, where it's talking about not just its growth alone, but the growth of nations together in the global south and that coalition. And the other interesting theme or thread that we've been following here, guys, is there has been some criticism of uh, Modi and the Modi government using or capitalizing on the G20 summit here in Delhi to begin what is essentially early campaigning. Early campaigning, yeah. And the talk of the name change? India versus Bharat. Now, Bharat is, of course, uh, uh, an ancient Sanskrit name, which v many Indians are very familiar with. And, you know, in the military, in fact, uh, Bharat Mata Ki Jai, which is my uh, Indian motherland should always win, is, is a very, very popular slogan. So for, the, for Indians, it, it's something that we are very used to. But for the world, it would require some bit of adjustment. But you're absolutely right, Martin, because just ahead of elections, talking about a name change, hinting at that, having the placards go with the Republic of Bharat, uh, the invita invitations go out with the Republic of Bharat just indicates that maybe a name change is in the work, which essentially means rebranding ahead of uh, the election, all important elections next year. Indeed, which are scheduled roughly, I think, in about eight, nine months or now. So that is something that uh, people are uh, cracking on, I guess, uh, Prime Minister Modi for. But, uh, you know, I have to note here, the G20, remember, is an economic grouping, an economic forum, or at least it's supposed to be. The last year's G20 summit in Bali, right, was overshadowed uh, by geopolitics dominated by uh, Russia's ongoing war in Ukraine. We have the uh, allegedly, purportedly, Russian missiles falling into uh, Poland, etc., which made the gathering almost a de facto mini 
G7 summit. Yep. But this year, though, the difference is if multilateralism is being overshadowed by anything at all, mm -hmm. it is India and Modi. It is India and Modi. And, and, and the fact that, you know, China is not there puts a spotlight squarely on how the bilateral between Prime Minister Modi and President Biden goes, right, in terms of what they decide, in terms of the, the issues that they try to iron out and how, how their proximity, because like you said, they're meeting three times in the last five months. That just goes out, sends out a strong signal that India is balancing all its equations very, very well. Having said that, it's not like it's uh, ha having an issue with Russia right now. It's still very much close to Russia, still managing its uh, relationship with the EU and still getting close uh, to the US, which puts India in a pole position when it comes to counterbalancing China's influence in this region. I just spoke with uh, Professor Ishwar Prasad and I'll just leave our viewers with this. He talked about the India-China uh, equation going forward and he essentially said that part of President Xi's absence from the G20 uh, Delhi summit has to do with him not being too eager to really see Prime Minister Modi take the spotlight. All right, so there you go. That is the latest and basically our take here from the G20 summit. Back to you.